Hey, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing something super special. I'm actually doing my the first ever Q&A video and I'm first of all very excited that people wanted to ask me questions and that's something I didn't expect. And second, I'm very interested to share my own personal life with you a little bit more because this channel is more about IELTS and I really hope you are interested in my life and me as a person as well. So let's get rolling. So the first question comes from Nirva Palsold. I hope I pronounced this correctly. And uh, she actually has three questions. All of them are very interesting and very deep. So I decided to answer uh, pretty much everything. So the first question she asks about um, judgment and she says that how do I deal with judgment? But luckily, uh, I do have and I do get very little judgment like that. Um, I don't really get any hate and um, that's very rare if a person writes me a negative comment. There are two ways of dealing with that. First, if that's a constructive criticism, I always, always welcome it because I know that any constructive criticism makes my channel better and makes my performance better. So if I see that a person is genuinely interested in sharing their view and making my work better, then I definitely take it. I try to develop myself and I try to incorporate that in my own performance. Now, when that's a pure hate and when I just see that a person comes from a very negative place and tries to hurt me, when they have nothing to bring me, then I definitely just kind of, you know, shield myself, I delete that comment, I maybe block that person and I move on with my life because this cannot bring me anything useful. And that, this is how I also advise dealing with your own judgment in your own life. If you get this judgment, please try to evaluate if that's constructive or not. If that's first, then obviously use that because this is your lesson. It's like your free piece of advice that is going to make you better. If that's just pure hate, then you just, you know, don't have to waste any time on that. Now, the second question is, did you ever get questions that, like, you are so young to do all of that? Yes, of course. While I am currently 23 years old, I do not feel young at this point at all, and I think that everything that I've achieved is kind of okay for my age. But when I was like 20 or 18, when I started my businesses, when I was a member of Scientific Academy of Ukraine, writing scientific papers, I had a scholarship when I was still at high school, um, I, I was doing a lot, and that's when I was getting all of that, wow, you are so young. And you know what, first, it, like, you might take it as a compliment and you might be like, yes, I am actually young and yes, I'm doing a lot, so thank you so much for noticing. But some people can be offended for some reason, I don't know why. I, me personally, sometimes I do get, you know, like, I'm not very happy when people comment something like, oh, you're so lucky to get all of this. And I'm like, excuse me? That was my hard work. That's not luck. This is me literally not sleeping for nights, working like crazy month and month and trying to get the life that I want to get. So this is hard work. And I don't like when people come in and say, oh, you're so lucky to have this. That's not luck. That was not given to me like a gift. I worked for it. So this really concerns all of my business and all of my studies and my acad academic achievements and everything that I have. So yeah, people come and saying that I'm quite young to do all of that, but I do try to take it as a compliment. And the last question is, she says that I know it's a silly question to ask, but do you feel safe and secure on social media platforms? I mean, I know you might be getting some really bad messages or comments. So again, I don't really get hate, but when it comes to weirdness online, this is a thing. And um, I consider myself not a sentimental or not a soft person. So it's very hard to offend me. I'm not one who can be easily offended or, you know. Uh, but sometimes there are times when people either comment on my looks and say something that is not very relevant or not very polite, which is okay, it's their own opinion, I don't judge them, they can voice their opinion. But I also get uh, quite a bit of messages of uh, like, you know, let's get married, or just messages from men, very rude and straight like, oh, I want to marry you. And I'm like, who are you? 
excuse me, I don't even know you, why do you think you can message a girl like that saying, hey, I want to marry you, like, you are a thing that I want to own for some reason, not even asking me as a person whether I want it or not. So it might be regarded as a compliment, however, what I do feel here and what I do see here is that men do this and it's not very equal. Women don't really do it. Like, women don't slide into someone's DM saying, hey, I want to marry you, being quite rude and straightforward. That's not how it works, right? But for me, I do get this a lot from people from all over the world and sometimes that is not very pleasant. And what is not pleasant as well is getting dick pictures. Now, this happened for, I think, like three times? during all of my like social media presence. Of course, that's disgusting in the first place. Like the first what you feel, you feel disgusted. But then you're also like, okay, so what? Of course I block those people straight away. But I'm also thinking, why are they doing this? Like what is their logic and reasoning behind this action? What do they try to convey, reach, achieve? I don't know, prove? Regardless, men do it, I was getting it, it's disgusting. Um, but again, like, this cannot hurt me, right? I just get it, I, I love it, I delete it, block the people, done. And I think that to be able to, you know, like, build a safe zone around yourself, you need to be a very hard person to offend, so it, it needs to be difficult to offend you. Also, coming from the, um, regarding the safe point, I do feel safe because I don't share anything too private. I don't share my phone number or the place where I live or people that are around me or my family, anything like that. That's very private, I don't share it. So there is a very small bit that I share with you online and I don't think anyone can use it to hurt me. And again, it's quite difficult to hurt me. So I think I'm quite safe. I don't feel that I'm not. Okay, next question from Facebook from Prahab Biswas and he asks uh, when I decided to launch my YouTube channel and what was my motivation, how I felt inspired. That's an amazing question because I, I think I've never really thought about this this much and uh, when I now when I kind of you know see my channel and I'm thinking why did I start to do it there is one distinct answer. I started to do it because I am inspired by people who are successful and who are not afraid to share their success, to share their knowledge and how have they come to this. So I think that's very powerful to be able to teach others and to be able not to, you know, just sit and hold everything to yourself. Teaching others, sharing with others for free, that's something that I really want to do and this is why I started this. Yeah, and also now when I get messages from people and people say that I've changed their lives, literally, no kidding, they say that I've changed their lives because they were able to use my free materials and prepare for IELTS, take the test, move abroad and like completely change their lives because they didn't have money or the ability to go to class or to take a course. Uh, in their home country. This is so meaningful and this is something that really strikes me every time and I'm like, whoa, I'm doing something that really changes a person's life somewhere in the world. This is crazy and this is what really inspires me right now. In the beginning it was more of a sharing moment and right now it's more of an inspiring moment and moment of changing a person's life for better. So now let's switch to Instagram and one question here is uh, to share my academic background so far and a little bit about my goals in, in my life. So my academic background is quite solid I suppose and I have a bachelor's uh, of economics and I also have a master in management. Two degrees, um, my master in management degree was amazing. I just graduated last month by the way and I will put the video of my graduation here. But it was such an amazing experience. The whole program, the Master in Management program, I took it with uh, the best university of Russia, which is the um, Graduate School of Management, I mean the management school, the best one here, and the best business school of Switzerland, which is the St. Gallen University, so I have a double degree there and plus kind of the third degree, I guess, at this point in my bachelor's, so I do have quite a solid academic experience 
when it comes to economics and management. Um, and my goal in life is to fight the waste problem here in Russia and in the CIS, in Ukraine for instance, because the problem is huge and no one is really doing anything. I'm very concerned about the environment and I really want to build a chain of waste recycling plants. And when I'm thinking who motivates me, what really comes to my mind is Elon Musk or people like him who are never afraid to break the status quo and disrupt the industry standard that is kind of fixed right now. So I really want to bring this whole problem to stop in Russia and really do something to reverse the system and to start recycling waste, to start to produce less waste and educate people about that. That's really a goal in my life and I, I hope I will be able to do it. It's quite difficult here in Russia concerning the whole mafia thing about waste. But, um, I don't know, I don't know, I will update you on the journey, but that's kind of my goal in life. The other question is my, about my struggle to learn English being Russian, because both accents are very different. That's actually very true. Now, um, in the beginning, I was struggling a lot with my English, and I started learning English, I think, around six years ago. And the first like two or three years, I really hated it. You cannot imagine. I had a private teacher, like a tutor. I had my classes at school. I was at that point at, in middle school. So I hated it so much. I was making up any reason possible not to go to class and not to do my homework, just because I didn't like it. But you know, at the point when I started making some progress, when I started seeing the progress and feeling that I'm able to express myself and explain what I mean, this is when I started liking the language. And this is when I started enjoying the whole process. But I also, tried to put in a lot of effort of changing my accent because Russian accent is quite distinct. Now, this is how usually, usually Russian people talk. They speak like this. Um, their accent is very distinct and it is actually very easy to understand, understand that a person is from Russia because they have this solid and strong R and because they speak with such a strong accent, you can instantly tell this person is from Russia. So, of course, I'm, I'm mocking this a little bit, but that's how most of the people speak, if they are from Russia, because it's quite difficult to change your accent. I tried to do it a lot and I was putting in so much work to change my accent and hopefully right now I do sound a little bit close to how a native person would sound. Um, of course, I'm not native, so don't judge me, guys. I'm trying, I'm trying my best to sound nice in English. Another question is about my daily routine. Um, I do wake up around 7 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. when it's summer, because I love waking up when it's, like, you know, early morning. Uh, when it's winter, I'm waking up at, I think, around, like, 9 or maybe 8 a.m., because in St. Petersburg, where I live the most of my time, it's quite difficult to get up in the morning when it's winter because the sun rises at 10 a.m., I think. It rises super late and you wake up when it's still night, literally. So that can be hard mentally. But I'm trying to get my early mornings for me because that's when I'm the most productive. And then I either go to the uni or I go to work and I try to eat healthy as much as I can and to exercise as much as I can. And I also try to take my like kind of me time and also time with my family and my loved ones around me, my friends. And also I always try to visit museums or concerts or philharmony or something like that to, you know, culturally educate myself because I love culture and I love reading about culture and going to museums. That's something that enriches my life so much. Another question is, I would like to know how can you arrange frequent visits abroad financially? So <laughs> that's a funny question because I actually do not go abroad frequently and I think I only went abroad two times. First time when I was studying in Switzerland for a um, long time, when I was getting my degree, and the second time when I went 
for a couple of days to Paris with BCG, Boston Consulting Group, uh, for a um, mergers and acquisitions, like corporate finance workshop there. So I only like traveling with a purpose, like when I had that purpose to go to Switzerland and study there or when I had the purpose to go to the finance workshop in uh, Paris, those were two distinct aims and targets that I had. So for me it's easier to travel when I know why I'm traveling. I don't like going just for the sake of going and spending my time and money without any purpose. So that's why I don't really go abroad too frequently. Um, and I don't really spend money on that. I mean, I went to Paris and BCG covered everything, the company, because it was a contest to get into the workshop. So they uh, take the best European students out of the best business schools of Europe and you have to go through a process of selection. And then if you are selected according to your academic achievements and your uh, work achievements, then you can get the free coverage. So that's what I did. Another question is, what made you feel to train students and become an IELTS trainer? Um, again, I think my uh, feeling that I have to share something. I really wanted to share my success because I think that getting almost 8.5, my overall score was 8.0 for the academic exam, but I only lacked like half a point in speaking to get the overall 8.5. Uh, which was my target. So I didn't hit my target, but I got 8.0 from my first attempt studying completely on my own without any courses, any teachers um, and preparing for less than a month. So I thought that this was a success and I wanted to kind of, you know, share what books I used, what uh, preparation materials I used. When I started my preparation for IELTS, I was at B2 level and um, the test got me C1, almost C2 in under a month of prep. So I think that was nice and I started sharing that. I really wanted to give my knowledge to others and to let others have the same experience as I did. Another question is what do you do for being productive when do you wake up in the morning? Again, I wake up around 7 a.m. and I think that my early morning time is the time when I'm the most productive. I love the time. So this really keeps me productive. Plus drinking lots of water, like honestly. When I don't drink water, I feel dead. Um, and also Sitting in a closed um, room or building for a long time makes my head very sore and aching, so I'm trying to go out as much as I can and get the fresh air, try to exercise. This keeps me productive as well. Another question is, what is my life motto? My life motto is, if you don't start now in one year, you will regret not starting. And this is so true. When I'm hesitating about starting something and just, you know, sitting and trying to do it, I'm thinking, okay, but in one year, if I didn't start right now, I would feel so bad. I would feel that I'm such a loser and I, that I didn't get anything done. So I really try to sit and do things because in the future, I will only thank myself for that. Another question is about my journey from childhood up to now. So. Again, this could be another video, but um, my parents were not rich at all. We are a normal family and they have three younger sisters. So uh, my father has to work a lot uh, for, you know, like keeping the family and trying to maintain our standard of living. So I was always inspired by him. I have read books that he gave me. I have talked with him a lot. I have witnessed him working so much and getting things done and achieving something in life. So I think he's the first person who really influenced me and my development. And then when I moved from Crimea, my native region, I moved to St. Petersburg and that's an amazing city without a doubt. And then I started living off my own expense. And that was when I was in, in my like third year of university, I think. I started earning my own money. So for some reason I made it about money, but <laughs> uh, in the reality I do have a very big family and we all love each other to death and we all are so supportive. I'm so blessed and so grateful for having such a family where everyone is healthy, everyone is working for our better future. So I think the family is something that really influences the life of a child and kind of, you know, predefines it for many years. I think that my family has definitely influenced me a lot. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for being here with me. I enjoyed it immensely. I think it was such a fun time. Please comment down below what things were unexpected for you or maybe you have some questions left and I will answer them in the next Q&A video. So yeah, I will be very happy if you decide to leave a like for me or even subscribe. And as always, I will be delighted to see you again here. Ciao!